In this video, we are going to look at the general category of metaphor. This category includes the metaphor proper, simile, and personification. We'll also look at the related terms, metonymy and synecdoche. And of course, we will look at a few short poems for some examples, and then we will answer the question, what's the difference between metaphor and analogy? So you probably already know about the difference between literal language and figurative language. Literal language uses words according to their denotation, according to their dictionary definitions. It's raining really hard. When figurative language is used, the meaning of the words is something other than what the words say, as in, it's raining cats and dogs. That means it's raining really hard, but it says it's raining cats and dogs. That's figurative language. Just like, Bob is a pig, or it's like my head is in a vice, or I'm lukewarm on that idea. After you are done with this video, give some thought to this question. Why do we use metaphors instead of saying exactly and literally what we mean? It's an important question. A metaphor is a figure of speech in which a comparison is made between two things that are unrelated. You have this thing, let's call that A. And then you compare it to another thing, let's call that thing B. As in the phrase, the wind howled in the night. This line is about the wind, so that's A. What's the wind being compared to? Howling things, probably wolves, right? This is a metaphor, a direct comparison between A and B. You can use an indirect comparison as well, one that goes through a word like, like or as. The wind howled like a wolf in the night. Then there's personification, that's when the B part of the comparison is a person. The wind whispered through the trees. Persons whisper, personification. There's this thing called a mixed metaphor. A mixed metaphor is when you combine two incompatible metaphors, and the result is usually ridiculous. You can probably tell by this definition that it's a bad thing. It is. You don't find mixed metaphors in good writing. Here's an example of a mixed metaphor. In that performance, she really shined like a bird spreading her wings for the first time. She's like a shining bird? Or a light bulb with wings? That's silly. She either spread her wings like a bird in the performance, or she shined in her performance like a light. Either is fine, but both? That doesn't work. Be careful you don't have any mixed metaphors in your own writing. Synecdoche is a figure of speech in which part is made to represent the whole, or vice versa. Here's an example. When a guy gets married, he takes her hand in marriage. The part stands for the whole. He doesn't just marry her hand, he gets all of her. Her hair, on the soap, and her feet, which he gets the privilege of rubbing when she's watching TV. Metonymy is a figure of speech in which a thing is replaced by another thing that is closely related to it or associated with it. It sounds more complicated than what it is. The White House or the Crown or Number 10 issued a statement today. These are associated with the US President, the British Monarchy, and the British Prime Minister, respectively. Here's a few more examples. The press reacted negatively. Hollywood released a new film. These are examples of metonymy. Now try this one. The pen is mightier than the sword. Explain the metonymy in that one. Let's look at a few quick examples of metaphor in some actual poems. This is The Guitarist Tunes Up by Francis Darwin Cornford. With what attentive courtesy he bent over his instrument. Not as a lordly conqueror who could command both wire and wood, but as a man with a loved woman might, inquiring with delight what slight essential things she had to say before they started he and she to play. Pause the video and reread it. What's being compared to what in this poem? So here's a man tuning up his guitar, and the speaker first comments how he does not tune it up, using a metaphor, and then he uses another metaphor to show how he does tune it up. He doesn't tune it up like a commanding conqueror. The main metaphor compares the guitar to a woman. So the guitar player and the guitar are like lovers. Note that both metaphors in the poem are in the form of a simile. I am using the term metaphor as the general category that includes simile and personification. Here's Psalm 23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
This poem is an example of an extended metaphor. It's not a quick metaphor like the wind howled. Extended metaphors extend over multiple lines, indeed through the whole poem, as this one does. The Lord as shepherd finds me pastures with good grass that are near calm waters. He leads me on good sheep paths. He keeps me in line and protects me with these tools that shepherds use called the rod and the staff. He puts oil on my head to deal with bugs in my eyes and ears. The Lord is my shepherd. Metaphor. One last point about metaphors. In the previous poems, both the thing compared and what it's compared to is named in the poem. The instrument is compared to a woman. Both are named. The Lord is named and he's being compared to a shepherd which is also named. But I need to warn you that this is not always the case. Sometimes the A or the B of a metaphor is not named. It's implied. Sometimes both of them are implied, as in the case of our next poem. Here is the first line of a poem by Emily Dickinson in which both parts of the metaphor are implied. It sifts from leaden sieves. This poem has about a thousand metaphors in it. The subject of the poem is it, and it sifts from leaden sieves. This is a sieve, but the one in the poem is made out of lead. So what does lead imply? Lead is heavy and it's gray. What does it mean to sift something? This is sifting. So what's being compared to what? If you read further into the poem, you can start to see that this poem's about snow. Snow is the it. So snow is falling from heavy gray clouds. And it looks like flower. Snow is like flower. Neither snow or flower are named, both are implied. So what's the difference between metaphor and analogy? Both of them compare two things. That's where the confusion lies. The metaphor compares things that are not alike. The analogy compares things that may appear unalike, but it deliberately focuses on the similarities. The real difference between metaphor and analogy lies with the purpose of each. The purpose of an analogy is to make a point with the comparison. You might say that it has a rhetorical purpose. The purpose of the comparison is to make something clearer, to explain something. So the focus of an analogy is on the subject. Here's an example. Analyzing a poem is like dissecting a frog. Neither survives the procedure. The subject of this statement is the analysis of a poem. The purpose of this statement is that too much analysis makes us lose the point of poetry. The metaphor doesn't necessarily make things more clear. It has a literary purpose. It tries to communicate something that can't be explained very easily, at least not literally. The focus of the metaphor is not its subject, but what goes on in the mind of the reader. The cave yawned. The writer is attempting to communicate to the reader how the cave opening feels. It's a mouth of something big that is a little sleepy, but it might just be interested in eating if it wakes up anymore. Here the point is not the point. The imaginative experience of the reader is. So in order to see how metaphor can work together with other elements, have a look at the video on the poem Bereft by Robert Frost. Thank you and we'll see you there.